Welcome to my introduction to networking course, also known as ITN. This is the version 7 material preparing learners for the Cisco CCNA 200-301. Cisco curriculum, everything is owned and copyrighted by them. So, the first one we talk about is copper. Copper is the most common type of cabling. However, copper has attenuation. And attenuation basically is the signal degrades based off the length of the cable. The signal strength is the same whether it be an inch or less than 100 meters. It is typical that after 100 meters, the signal starts to degrade. Keep in mind, 100 meters is about 300, 330-ish feet. So the longer the cable is past 100 meters, the more likely that attenuation may occur. Also, there are two heavy limiting factors for copper cabling. is It is susceptible to noise. And there's two types of noise. Electromagnetic interference, that's electrical noise, and radio frequency interference. And that's typically called um, radio waves. And if there are cables pushed too close together, the EMI could cause crosstalk. And crosstalk is where one cable, electrical signals, may jump to another cable. So how do we mitigate some of these? We follow the appropriate international standards. They outline length, they outline termination, they outline proper uh, storage and installation and how far you can bend the cable and how you bend the cable. All of those are outlined in standards that we should be following. If we're talking how do we prevent EMI or uh, RFI, Maybe we do shielding or we do a specific type of grounding to kind of help mitigate those, which we will talk about both of those when we talk about specific type of copper cable in the next slide. Some of the types of copper cables can mitigate crosstalk by twisting uh, cables appropriately. So it just kind of depends on what type of cabling we're talking about because copper cables are not just one type. We have three types of copper based cables and that is the traditional coax that's somewhat that you'd be seeing on like your TV. Coax is still very common in broadband and satellite and some other forms of communication. That is still a type of physical connection when we talk our data networks. The other are twisted pair cables. And twisted pair come in two flavors, unshielded and shielded. You will notice, first of all, that our unshielded, each one of these cables is actually twisted at different lengths. And then the green is slightly different. So the twists actually matter and how close they're twisted together actually matter. That helps prevent crosstalk, the electrical signal jumping from one cable to another. Here with STP, you'll notice in the background some tin foil. Well, that tin foil actually allows us to wrap individual pairs to provide shielding for the cable. That helps prevent EMI and RFI. However, that shielding is expensive. So STP cable is typically more expensive. So the key characteristic is the outer jacket for UTP. It will be a plastic uh, cable. It should have some type of core cable that will be again a plastic or fiber and then the individual twists of each pairs. There should be four pairs, an orange pair, green, blue, and brown pairs accordingly. 
each pair will have a solid and a striped. So solid being all orange, striped being orange and orange white. And that makes up those pairs. We actually have to make a cable according to color patterns. And that color patterns are based off of these pairs. Shielded twisted pair, again, we have individual shields between each pair of cables. That shielding provides protection. The cable itself could also be wrapped up in another layer of protection. STP provides better protection, but it's more expensive. And because all of this extra layers, the cable is harder to move. So that means it's a little harder to install. The pro is it provides better protection for EMI and RFI. Again, we already talked about coax being like our traditional TV, our TV being that F-type connector, and our coax is a plastic outer jacket, a metal mesh, a white plastic protecting the core. The core is typically made out of copper. That core is actually what makes the connection. The nice thing is, what we do is we strip away, when making the cable, we strip away the plastic, the metal, and we take a little bit of that white core or the white plastic and we expose it so we see the core. We want the core, the copper portion, to actually go through the cable. So typically when you're looking at like a coax cable for your TV and you look at the cable and you see a little center copper portion, that is the core of the cable. And again, typically if we're talking TV coax, we're talking F connectors. That's that guy right there. Coax is very commonly used in internet for like broadband, like cable internet, and in wireless. Connecting the wireless antennas typically use coax. So let's go a little bit more in depth in UTP. UTP, again, is unshielded twisted pair. We've already talked. There are four pairs, and they're all twisted slightly different to prevent for crosstalk. Again, the variation per foot per wire prevents different forms of crosstalk. Some of the standards are outlined by IATIA. It doesn't matter if it says TIA, IA, or IATIA, same organization. The standards talk about the length, the connectors, the termination, and the testing methods. Very common is we have different types of categories of UTP cables. We can have category or a CAT 3, 4, 5, 5E, 6, 6E, 6A, 7, 8, 9, and so forth. Basically, the higher the category, the newer the cable. Newer cable standards allow for better transfer of data. For example, it's really common CAT5 and CAT5E for deployments. Well, CAT5E can go about a gig per second. Well, the problem is if we're trying to do uh, 10 gig, well, CAT5E doesn't work anymore for 10 gig. CAT6 is becoming the new standard for our data installation. CAT6 allows for higher speeds of data. And CAT6 could also include forms of protection on individual pairs. It also is made out of better material, pure copper, and allows for higher frequency of data transfer, thus allowing for more bits per second. Hence why CAT6 is better than CAT5E. So let's talk about our connectors. Two types of connectors, a RJ45 head, You'll notice that there are four pins, sorry, eight pins, four pairs of pins. We do not need to strip individual pairs of wire. These are metal teeth. When we go to terminate the copper cable, 
our terminating tool is called a crimper, and it pushes these metal teeth into the plastic portion of the cable, thus allowing a connection to form. We have RJ45 sockets, also called RJ45 keystones, and these basically give us a female port. So how do we know if we're making the cable correctly? A properly terminated cable will look like this. The important part is this center part here. We have this plastic uh, punch down actually punching down onto the cable. Thus, if we're pulling the cable, that provides a certain level of protection. Here, we don't have that protection, so if we pull on the cable, we're actually pulling on the plastic core portions and thus can be damaged. So now let's look at the RJ45 keystones a little more in depth. We'll notice that there are certain colors here on both sides. So how does that work? Well, the colors outline different standards. There are two major types of standards, IATIA 568A and IATIA 568B. Notice the striped colors, stripe, solid, stripe, solid, stripe, solid, stripe, solid. Also notice the order. When we're talking basic communication, we have to make sure that four, cable, four pins are correct in the process. If one, two, three, and six are created and they're, they're matching and they're done, basic communication will flow. If we want a full functioning cable, we need to make sure all eight pins are correct. But as long as one, two, three, and six are connected, basic communication will occur. We're not talking fast, we're not talking 100 megabit, you know, gig or 10 gig, but you know, basic 10 meg-ish connection is definitely doable with one, two, three, and six. So when we're making a cable, we choose either A or B. Well, see, that's the thing. A straight through copper cable is the same standard on both sides. So we can do A on both sides or we can do B on both sides. Well, the issue with a straight through is it will have to connect to unlike devices. A computer to a switch, for example, will use a straight through. A switch through a router will use a straight through. What happens when we need to connect a computer directly to another computer? A straight through doesn't work. We have to use a special cable called a crossover. Crossover is standard A on one side and standard B on the other. So crossovers are used with like devices. Computer to computer, switch to switch, router to router will all use crossover cables. One consideration is this auto MDIX and that's a, a cable sensing technology that will flip the cable if it detects that it's using a straight through. Not all devices have it, so the best practice is to use the appropriate cable standard. If we're talking like devices, crossover. Everything else we use a straight through. Lastly, we have this third type of cable called the rollover. A rollover cable basically is a DB9, a serial port on one side, and a RJ45 connector on the other side. This is used to program equipment. So if we're talking straight ethernet cables, two main types, straight through and crossover. You need to know where to apply the cables when wiring up a network. Crossover like devices, straight through is everything else. And that is this chapter in a nutshell. 
If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out.